When you're doing propositional logic, you're going to use a lot of propositions. Propositions are statements that can be true or false. Here is an argument that has P as the proposition, it is going to rain, and the proposition Q, the proposition, you should take an umbrella. And in the symbolic logic, in propositional logic, we get a valid argument form called modus ponens, which uses two propositions, propositions P and propositions Q. And you're given an argument. It's a valid argument form. And the first premise says, if P, then Q. The second premise says P. And the logical conclusion, which must be true if the premises are true, is Q. In other words, premise one, if it is raining, then you should take an umbrella. Premise two, it is raining. The necessary conclusion is you should take an umbrella. This argument called modus ponens just is one out of many rules in symbolic logic. So that's that first one. If P then Q, P therefore Q. And the order of premise one and premise two doesn't matter. And there might even be an implicit premise, but it's not necessary because if you have an argument where P is plugged in with the same proposition throughout correctly and Q is plugged in with the same proposition correctly throughout as well, then whatever your conclusion is, is going to be necessarily true if the premises are true. That's going to be a valid argument. Valid means that the conclusion is true if the premises are true. So all you need to know is, is P, Q, is P true and is Q true? And if both of those are true, then you, you even know that you have a sound conclusion in addition to a valid argument. So that's just the top one there, modus ponens, that first one. And all of these are rules that you can follow in logic just like math, and you can learn more about it on this awesome website here. But I added a bunch of things after I printed it out. And I wanted to just talk to you a little bit further about how to understand this valid argument form. This is a premise and a premise, and it leads to a conclusion. If P then Q is the first premise, what's P, what's Q, what are these letters? The letters are all propositions. A proposition is a statement that can be true or false. Each letter, each of those letters, is one proposition. And the proposition has a specific truth value. Either it's true or it's false. Falsity is a truth value of a proposition. Because if the proposition is false, then its truth value, its value, according to the standard of truth, is that it's false. Every proposition could be false or true. No proposition can be true and false. No proposition could be neither true nor false. The law of excluded middle, which applies to all propositions, says that a proposition is a statement that can be true or false, not both and not neither. Going back to the truth value, that means that every proposition can be true or false. These are atomic propositions. It's just a letter and the letter represents an idea like, um, for example, P and H, this could be P representing pizza is here, and H could be representing I am hungry. Um, but that means that the, the proposition P is the proposition that pizza is here. And that makes what we've got here a compound proposition. Now, I said that each proposition has a truth value which can be true or false, that compound proposition has its own truth value, right? Because every proposition is a statement which can be true or false, not both, not neither. That's what the law of excluded middle tells us. So what do we've got, what, what do we have here? What have we've got here? We've got an argument where we have a compound proposition in premise one, and premise two, that second line, we have an atomic proposition. It just so happens that the atomic proposition in premise two is the antecedent, which means the thing that comes before the sign 
And the thing that comes after the sign is the consequent in this premise P then Q. That says if P then Q, the P is the antecedent and the Q is the consequent. If P then Q, and then premise two puts the antecedent of the if then proposition, compound proposition in there. So it's, it's saying if P then Q, and it's saying P. You just said if P then Q, so if P then Q. Q is the necessary conclusion. Q is the necessary conclusion of this argument. This is called the modus ponens, the mode of putting. What'd you put? You put the antecedent in that if-then statement and you necessarily concluded with the consequent. So Q is just proven based on premise one and two. The first premise is a compound proposition. It says, if P then Q. And there is a truth value, there is a truth value to that statement, if P then Q. If it's raining, then you should take an umbrella. Is that true or is that false? If it's raining, you should take an umbrella. Premise one says, if it's raining, you should take an umbrella. Premise two says, it is raining. The conclusion, necessarily, is that you should take an umbrella. So that's how logic works. We just proved that you should take an umbrella because we gave you reasons in favor of the conclusion you should take an umbrella. If it's true that it's raining, if it's true that if it's raining, you should take an umbrella, then anyone to which this applies should take an umbrella. It's the logical consequence of the argument modus ponens, which is just one valid argument form, like a rule that you just plug in the propositions and you can play with the ideas and do a lots of mental gymnastics, concluding that something is necessarily true, assuming that the premises are true. You'd have to assume that the premises are true. And sometimes in symbolic logic, we can do that because we've got these signs and the signs tell us what to do. Like that first one in modus ponens is an if-then statement. Here we can have the symbol, rather than an arrow, a dot or a V. And we can say things like, here's complex sentences. Pizza is here and I am hungry. Well, what has to be true in order for that to be true? It, it has to be the case that there is only one scenario in the universe where it's true that pizza is here and I am hungry. The only universe in which that compound sentence, the compound proposition is true, is if both of those atomic propositions are true. See, P could be true or false. H could be true or false, and since there's two of them, two times two, because there's two options for each, means there's four possible worlds. They could both be true in the same case, then that whole proposition if P, uh, sorry, P and H is true, but if one of them's false, like if H is false, then the compound proposition is false. If the other one is false, if P is false, then the compound proposition is false. And if they're both false, then the compound proposition is false. There is a truth value to every proposition, a compound proposition, you know, two atomic propositions or more, connected by a logical operator or more than one, give you their own compound proposition which has its own truth value. And for the and, both of them have to be true or else the compound proposition will not be true. Unlike the or, because if you're dealing with or, then uh, only one of them has to be true, and then the compound proposition is true. Well, I'll show you that in a different video.